What if Mace Windu raised and trained Luke Skywalker? That's our story for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please leave a like and make sure to subscribe, and let's get right into it. Our story begins on the Tantive IV, after the duels between Skywalker vs. Kenobi and Yoda vs. Darth Sidious. Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Bail Organa are sitting around a table inside the ship, discussing the fate of the twins, Luke and Leia Skywalker, when suddenly, the same secure Jedi frequency that Obi-Wan used to contact Bail after Utapau was now activated once more. Emergency code 913, the same one Obi-Wan used, was only known to Masters, and so Bail switched on the recording to see the face of Mace Windu. He was appearing as a hologram, but it was clear his face was scarred and burned, and he was hiding deep in a Coruscant alley. Windu's face showed a moment of relief as he saw Yoda and Obi-Wan, and he asked what was going on. The last thing he remembered was Anakin cutting his arm off and Sidious throwing him out of the window. Mace woke up many hours later, inside of a broken down building he must have crashed into. He wasn't even truly sure how he survived, but Windu imagined in the adrenaline of the fall that he was able to call upon the force for a soft landing before being knocked out for however long it has been, and the horror of everything that happened almost knocked Windu out once more. Together, Bail, Obi-Wan, and Yoda described the horrors of Order 66. The Jedi Temple was raided by Anakin and the clones, and very few Jedi survived the onslaught, if any. Palpatine became Emperor of the Galaxy, and he beat Yoda in a duel. Windu considered all of this, then finally asked about Skywalker, and he saw Obi-Wan's face turn extremely sad, as Obi-Wan had to say that he left him for dead, burning away on Mustafar. Windu told Obi-Wan he's extremely sorry, he should have done more to quell Anakin's attack in the Chancellor's office. But Yoda said it's over now, and they flew to Coruscant to meet up with Windu deep in the lower levels where he was hiding. And once Windu was officially back with them, they discussed the fates of the children once again. Bail Organa decided he would be taking Leia, as he and his wife have always talked about adopting a little girl. This was good, and now they had to decide on Luke. Obi-Wan considered taking him, perhaps bringing him to his family on Tatooine but he suddenly couldn't imagine raising and training the child of Anakin. He failed once. Could he do it again? Windu saw this from across the table, and as medical surgery droids were finishing up construction of his new hand, Windu decided that he will raise and train the boy. He will make up for the mistakes the Order made with Anakin by allowing him into the Order so late and not being strong enough with him. Windu wanted to train Luke the different way. Yoda and Obi-Wan were surprised by this, but Windu insisted and he told them he would go to Ryloth, live out in the hills, as the people of Ryloth will certainly oppose the Empire and welcome him after his liberation of the Separatists early in the war. Windu and the people of Ryloth did maintain consistent communication during the war, and they were close as allies. And so it was done. Windu would take Luke to Ryloth, Yoda went to Dagobah, and Obi-Wan traveled home to the planet Stugin, wondering if perhaps he could find his real family and walk away from his failures as a Jedi. He was in a horrible place mentally, as his student was responsible for genocide of the Jedi and the rise of an empire. He took that pretty hard. And on Ryloth, Sham Syndulla and those close to him would be the only ones to know of Windu's arrival. They were rather hesitant to allow a Jedi Master of such high stature into their planet with the threat of the Empire looming, but they did owe Windu, and he was clearly desperate for this. So Sham would bring the Jedi Master into the forest neighboring their most popular city, and Windu would be given an older but well-furnished and put-together home underground. The forests were covered in dangerous terrain and dangerous predators, but the underground cave was safe. Windu thanked everyone, and he would begin his new life with Luke Skywalker. And in the quiet wilderness of Ryloth, Maze Windu did now live the life of exile, raising the young Luke in the hidden shadows of the Empire. Windu, the once great Jedi Master, was now hunting wild boars and other game in the forests above. He would fish in the rivers, he'd gather what greens and berries the land provided, and for baby Luke, sustenance would come from the kindness of Elenai Sindula, who discreetly brought food until Luke was old enough to eat the spoils of the wild with Windu. Initially, Windu did not feel connected to Luke. He was the offspring of the Jedi Order's greatest failure. But as time went by, and they were the only real company for each other, Windu couldn't help but grow closer to the boy. As Luke grew, so did Windu's attachment to him. The boy reminded him of Anakin Skywalker, both the good and the bad, and from the time Luke could walk, it was clear he craved adventure. But the child was also stubborn, moody, and mischievous. Windu would often find himself reflecting on his time 
within the Jedi Order, the Order's fall, and how they had failed to save Anakin from the Dark Path, despite it always being right in front of their face with Palpatine. He feared history would repeat itself in Luke. And yet, despite his apprehension, he took great care of the boy, balancing his needs for nurturing with the harshness of survival in exile. Luke's innocence brought Windu moments of peace, even as memories of the past continued to haunt him. The boy had no idea who his parents truly were, and Windu knew it was wrong to hold any of Anakin's wrongdoings against him. So, he soon saw the boy as his own child in Padawan. By the time Luke was three years old, his natural curiosity and strength in the Force began to really emerge. Windu, sensing the boy's potential, could not ignore his duty to train him, despite his fears of him turning out like his father. He was teaching Luke the basics of meditation, mindfulness, and discipline, and these weren't easy to teach to a child so young, but Luke was strong and smart for his age, and with each passing year, Luke's abilities became more evident, and Windu saw in him the same raw talent that was present in Anakin. At times, this made Windu nervous, but he also realized that he could guide Luke in ways he was never able to guide Anakin, as Anakin didn't start training until around age 10, and his connection to his mother was dangerous. At five years old, Luke's curiosity about the world beyond their hidden cave was uncontainable. He was asking endless questions about the forest, the animals, and the people they occasionally would glimpse from the distance. Windu was of course cautious by nature, he was hesitant to expose Luke to the dangers of this outside world, especially with the ever-present threat to the Empire. The Empire was getting more and more troopers here every day, but Luke's persistence was hard to deny and Windu would begin allowing him to explore the nearby woods under his watchful eye, training in the woods, running around, jumping over fallen trees, and Windu would also stand atop cliffs with Luke, and they would watch as the people of Ryloth went about their days. Windu would show Luke the troopers dressed in white armor or gray uniforms in the cities, and he would say that these people are bad, dangerous people, and Luke didn't fully understand, but he knew never to approach the Imperials. One day, during one of their explorations, Luke would discover an old boarded up cave. Excited by his find, the boy of course rushed inside before Windu could stop him. Windu's heart raced as he sensed the danger, and sure enough, the cave was infested with lilacs, massive insectoid creatures known for their ferocity. Windu barely managed to pull Luke out just in time, the creatures hot on their heels, screeching, clawing at them. And using the force, Windu sealed the cave entrance with a boulder, but the near miss shook him deeply. He realized how difficult it was going to be to protect Luke from the many dangers of Ryloth, both natural and imperial, and Windu wondered if perhaps the best way to protect Luke was to continue exposing him to the outside world, so when it eventually came, Luke would not be too off-put. As Luke's training progressed, Windu did find himself in a constant balancing act. He had to ensure Luke remained hidden from the Empire, which had a growing presence on Ryloth, yet he wanted the boy to have some semblance of a normal life. And so, Windu would soon allow Luke to interact with a few trusted locals, including the Sindulas. Hera was very, very nice to Luke, as she was very rebellious in her own nature, possibly on the way out of Ryloth altogether, but for now, she was very friendly to Luke, even teaching him some tips about flying. They always kept their true identities a secret. However, secrecy would become harder to maintain, as the Empire's grip on Ryloth continued to tighten. When Luke was 10, Ryloth was facing great Imperial occupation, and the arrival of Moff Delian Moors marked a turning point of it all. Moors lived on a Ryloth moon with great wealth, and oversaw the beginning of stripping the planet of its resources and enslaving the native Twi'leks if they did not comply with new Imperial rules. The oppression ignited a flame of rebellion within Windu. Though he had long distanced himself from galactic politics, the suffering he witnessed pushed him to action. He had long known of a budding rebellion within Ryloth, led by Shams and Dula, and so, the Free Ryloth Movement, an underground resistance force aimed at sabotaging Imperial efforts on the planet, was now joined by Windu. With Luke by his side, developing strongly at his young age, Windu trained the rebels in guerrilla tactics, teaching them to fight with staffs, while Sham taught them how to shoot, and both of these leaders were preparing the people for a fight they knew would eventually draw the Empire's attention. After months, the disruption of Imperial trade routes had the desired effect. Palpatine himself, accompanied by Darth Vader, decided to investigate the unrest on Ryloth. The Emperor's visit was supposed to be a secret, but Shams and Dula's network was vast, and Senator Ornfri Ta, unwilling to see his own people crushed under the Empire's boot, warned the Free Ryloth Movement of their imminent arrival. 
Senator Ta was largely known as a Senate puppet, but he knew he may lose his seat if the Emperor was not pleased with where the planet was at. So he warned Cham about the upcoming visit from the Emperor and Vader, hoping Cham would go into hiding. But instead, Windu and Cham knew this was their chance to strike a decisive blow against the Empire, and together, they devised a plan to eliminate the Emperor and his mysterious enforcer once and for all. Windu never learned that Anakin was renamed as Vader, so he saw this man as some sort of new General Grievous, rather than a fallen Jedi. For roughly 10 days, the Free Ryloth movement began plotting and putting together plans to cut off the heads of the Snake of the Empire. It had to be perfect, and so when Palpatine's Star Destroyer finally entered Ryloth's atmosphere, the Free Ryloth movement sprang their trap. The Star Destroyer emerged from hyperspace, and without warning, hundreds of space mines exploded around the massive ship, knocking out its shields. Sidious stood on the bridge, feeling the shaking and explosions as the mines went off, and he closed his eyes, trying to find who was at the head of this attack. But it wouldn't stop there. Suddenly, swarms of repurposed vulture droids and buzz droids from the Clone Wars battles on the planet attacked, tearing apart the hull of the destroyer, as TIE fighters, including Vader, tried desperately to defend the Star Destroyer, but whoever orchestrated this attack did it perfectly, and they knew exactly when and where they were coming from. The ship, critically damaged, was soon beginning to erupt, and Darth Sidious was guided to his shuttle with his Red Guards, as they were forced to make an emergency landing in the forests. Many escape pods jolted out of the destroyer as it went up in flames, and they were all destroyed by droid fighters, but Vader was able to guide Sidious's shuttle to the ground. It was hit by a few droid blasts, causing it to crash, but both Vader and Sidious were alive in the forests. Windu could feel the dark presence of Vader and Sidious even before they emerged from this wreckage. The spies would call to Windu and Cham, reporting their positions, and Windu ordered them not to engage. The Free Ryloth movement had their prey right where they wanted them. So as Vader and Sidious landed, Vulture droids left space, targeting the Sith Lords, funneling them deep into the forests to get away from the Vulture droids towards the cave where the Lilacs resided, a deadly gauntlet that even the Sith Lords would struggle to survive. Windu and Chan's forces lured them into the heart of the cave, where the Lilacs were suddenly attacking in a furious swarm. The battle was brutal, as Sidious, Vader, and the two surviving royal guards were quickly faced with a swarm of bugs, with pincers trying to snap them in half, or poison spraying out at them. The nest cave was filled with hundreds of them, and Sidious was pouring lightning out of one hand, while slicing through many others with his red blade, as Vader flew through the cave, slamming the creatures into walls, crushing them with the force, using his lightsaber to cut dozens of them at a time, throwing it through the room while lightning sprayed around the nest. Both royal guards were killed by the bugs, but after nearly an hour, Vader and Sidious killed every single last one of the creatures, and by the time Vader and Sidious emerged from the other side, they were covered in the blood and the remains of the lilacs, exhausted, but still standing. But the Lilac Cave was only the beginning. Waiting for them outside of the cave were Windu, Cham, and the hundreds of fighters for the Free Ryloth Movement, their weapons drawn, ready for a new confrontation. Sidious and Vader locked eyes with Windu, recognizing him instantly as he ignited the Purple Blade, ready for this ultimate revenge. Luke Skywalker was watching from a great distance with binoculars as the man he saw as a father was taking on the strongest members of the Empire. The fight would erupt within a moment, with Windu launching himself at Darth Sidious. He didn't wait, and their lightsabers clashed in a sudden display of power, with red and purple sheets clashing against each other. Sidious was laughing at Windu at how far the Jedi have fallen and their feeble attempts to destroy him. But Windu was more focused than he'd ever been, and the two opponents separated from Vader and the Freedom Fighters, as now they moved through the trees like ghosts, their blades humming in the dense forest as they leapt from tree to tree. Windu's strikes were relentless, as he once again was able to use his mastery of the pod to channel the dark energy Sidious radiated, turning it into his own strength. Sidious fought back, but he'd underestimated the toll that the Lilacs had taken on him. His movements quickly began to falter, as exhaustion was creeping into his limbs. He enhanced his strength with the Force, but would it be enough? Windu was not nearly as exhausted, and he was using the currents of the Force to only enhance his own speed and power, as he used the trees to his advantage vaulting off of branches, disappearing into the shadows, forcing Sidious to defend from every angle as branches crashed down on him. The Sith Lord was retaliating by sending bursts of force lightning through the air, splintering tree trunks, 
scorching the ground. But Windu dodged these blasts, catching the splintering trees, his focus only getting stronger. With each step Sidious took, Windu was there, pushing him, pressing him back deeper into the forests. It was a battle of endurance, with Windu's strength outlasting Sidious's malice and his anger. He was overconfident, and in a final surge of power, Sidious tried to strike Windu down by throwing his blade and shooting lightning at the same time. But the former Jedi Master was too fast. He spun in the air, catching Sidious's own blade, leaping further into the air while blocking the lightning with both sabers, then landed and sliced through Sidious's neck with both sabers at once. Sidious took one final surprised gasp, and any glee or excitement faded from his eyes as his head rolled to the ground. Windu was breathing heavily around the ruined forest, and he suddenly could hear the sounds of carnage coming from outside the forest. Racing back to the open clearing, Windu arrived just in time to see Cham Syndulla and the last few freedom fighters locked in a desperate struggle against Darth Vader. Maybe a hundred bodies were strewn on the ground as the Sith Lord cut through the rebels like a force of nature, his crimson blade a blur of death all around. Cham's forces could not stand against the sheer power of Vader's rage. But before Vader could finish this battle, Windu pulled Vader towards him with the Force, suddenly stabbing through the chest of the unsuspecting Sith Lord. Vader yelled out in pain and anger as Windu drove him to the ground before slicing off his mask. And Windu suddenly removed his blade, stumbling backwards with confusion as Vader was slumped down against a large tree, his breathing slowing. It was Anakin. Windu couldn't believe it. In this moment, hundreds of different thoughts were running through Windu's mind as he let his guard down in the Force, allowing Vader to feel exactly what he was thinking. As Vader looked at him, he wondered why Windu was suddenly so conflicted, and he traced Windu's thoughts to a nearby hill, where a human boy stood with a group of Twi'leks. He looked back to Windu, realizing exactly what was going on, and Vader saw now that the Jedi he hated above all was raising his own son. This broke Vader's heart more than ever, but somehow he could sense that the boy was not only happy, but strong in the light side of the Force, and Vader looked to Windu, making him promise to never tell Luke the truth about him. Windu nodded, and he said Anakin would have been proud of his son, and Vader was able to die with some closure, knowing Padme's memory was being carried on by his son after he failed to live the life she would have wanted, and Vader was gone. Windu looked from Vader to Luke, and he smiled. The ten-year-old boy smiled back, proud of his adoptive father for helping defeat these enemies. With the Emperor and Vader dead, the galaxy would enter a fragile new era. Windu, scarred by the years of conflict, resumed his focus to Luke. Ryloth was still under the shadow of the Empire, but with Sidious and Vader gone, the chains began to loosen. Windu, now more a fatherly mentor than a Jedi Master, raised Luke in the way he thought Qui-Gon may have raised Anakin, with patience, understanding, and the freedom to express himself. He did not force Luke into the rigid teachings of the old Jedi Order, knowing that its inflexibility had led to its downfall. He saw what became of Anakin. So instead, Windu encouraged Luke to think critically, embrace his emotions without letting them control him, and find his own path within the Force. Luke was always eager to learn, and he thrived under Windu's guidance. Though the boy had his father's fire, Windu did not stifle it, as the Jedi had tried to do with Anakin. He allowed Luke to be himself, explore anger, joy, sadness, and he taught him to use these feelings as a sort of strength rather than a weakness, not for power, but for growth as a Jedi and as a person. Their bond would deepen over the years, like father and son, and as Luke matured, Windu soon shared many, many stories of the Jedi Order and of a great Jedi Knight who'd once been his ally, Anakin Skywalker. He told Luke of Anakin's bravery during the Clone Wars, of his skills as a pilot, and his deep loyalty to those he cared about. But Windu left out the darker truths, the betrayal, the fall, and his transformation into Darth Vader, keeping his promise from Anakin. Luke was told that his father had died in battle during the Clone Wars, a hero who fought valiantly for peace. He knew the full story would someday come to light, but for now, he wanted Luke to have the memory of a father who'd once been a great man before the Sith consumed him. And as Luke grew stronger in the Force, the rebellion on Ryloth ignited something far greater. Word spread years ago across the galaxy of the Emperor's death, and rebellions were sparking on countless planets. Windu and Luke, now deeply involved in the full rebellion, began traveling system to system, sowing the seeds of resistance. The Empire was far from defeated. Men like Grand Admiral Thrawn, Grand Moff Tarkin, and Colonel Yularen were determined to keep the Empire intact, their military expertise holding it together. Masameda was maintaining political control over Coruscant, 
but his power was waning every day. The Galactic Civil War was brutal. Luke, now in his late teens, fought alongside Windu in countless skirmishes. He was a symbol of hope to the galaxy. His name whispered among the Rebellion as the son of legendary Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker. But very few knew the full truth. Windu was aging, but he was still a great warrior, watching over the boy that was once just eager to explore Ryloth, as he'd now become a leader for the galaxy. The Empire, though battered, would not fall easily, as Thrawn and Tarkin launched devastating counterattacks day after day, but their hold on the galaxy was weakening, and one by one, planets were being liberated from Imperial control, and the final push came on Coruscant, where the remnants of the Imperial fleet made their last stand. In a climactic battle, Luke and Windu helped fight their way through the capital, facing down the most elite of the Empire's forces. After the fall of Coruscant, Leia Organa was named Chancellor of the New Republic. Her leadership was bringing hope to a galaxy that was tired of the war, tired of the Empire. And Windu, now older but still a pillar of strength, did still continue to guide Luke, but the nature of their relationship had changed. No longer just master and apprentice, they were near equals, warriors who'd seen the galaxy at its worst, and they fought together for this future. Their scars from the war remained, but with Leia at the helm and Luke at the front of rebuilding the Jedi Order, there was hope that the galaxy could heal. In the end, Windu knew he succeeded where he had once failed. Luke was not Anakin, but in him, the best parts of his father did live on. The galaxy was fragile, but it was free, and Windu could find peace knowing that he helped shape the future. He helped restore the Republic that he once loved, and he would eventually pass on into the Force after reuniting with Yoda on Dagobah, Windu's body was old and worn down from constant fighting. And together, the two pillars of the old Jedi Order would give Luke their blessing to be the new Grand Master, with Obi-Wan always watching from a distance. And they passed on, as they were sure the galaxy was secure. And folks, that is our story for today. This is something that someone recommended in the comments a handful of days ago. And immediately as I saw it, I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. So wanted to explore it, just the overall... I don't know, conflict that would be with Windu trying to raise the boy of the, of the, you know, the child of the guy that ruined everything. And Windu just kind of having to adapt and, you know, with him only having the company of Luke, he quickly, I think, would kind of just adapt to it and try to maintain a order and maintain the Jedi Order. So I did enjoy this one quite a bit. I took the um, Vader and Palpatine going to Ryloth. It actually happens in the Lords of the Sith novel. And I, this is kind of a what if in the what if, like what if the um, Ryloth assassination attempt actually did work. So that's what we got today. Kind of, you know, it was fun to do. So hope you enjoyed that. The Lilacs, fun little part in that novel. So I recommend reading that. Anyways, appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like. Please subscribe. Let me know what you thought. And I, I really script these end things because I'm just rambling. I'm just saying words, man. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.